Okay, let's jump into a little bit of sound design. The next scene has a pretty intricate effect of an axe flying through the air. We need to build this up. So let's actually take a look at the scene and figure out what our strategy is going to be to build this up. So our mask wearing friend hurls the axe through the air, which ultimately impales itself into the windshield of the Toyota. We've got this huge pickaxe flying through the air. It's really a, a complex thing of, of elements that makes this whole scene work. So it's really not a simple throw an effect in there from a library and make it and it's going to work. So we need to do something uh, different. I've actually got a stock piece of wind um, from a library that I brought out here and let's just listen to it real quick here. Okay, I've got some wind that kind of gets dark at the end. Um, what I want to first do is actually trim it to the length of the actual throw. Now I'm using the jog wheel on D command. And you can see with satellite link, I've got integration so that everybody is moving. I can do frame bumping. I can actually figure out where does this impact the windshield. Let's go back one frame from that. By holding down the mark in and mark out buttons on the D command while moving the jog shuttle wheel, you can define the in and out points easily. Now I want to do a quick trim. On the, D on the D command, we've got the ability to do a trim to selection. And I've got that in my favorites right now. So I'm going to do a quick little trim. And uh, then we'll just do some quick little edits on this, just a little fade in, fade out, okay? So now we've got the wind that is the right length for the actual throw. Now we really need to process it to make it sound like it's not just wind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up a stack of plugins. Um, the most important one here is called Doppler from GRM Tools. Now this emulates a Doppler shift. It also allows you to simulate an object rotating on an axis, and that's perfect for what we're doing. So I'm going to use custom faders to be able to control the plugin and all the parameters in there from the console. So first thing we want to do is I'm just going to set a, set a quick little in and out so we can work over, over a looped range. And we're going to start working, try to rough this in and get an effect going. So let's just listen to a couple of the things that we can do with Doppler, first of all. So we can change the, the frequency, we can change the amplitude, we can change the position, and then also panning in, in 5.1 space. So I'm going to, um, previously we were taking a look at um, our automation lane, so I want to show you those at the same time while we're working to see all the different parameters that we're manipulating from the console visually in Pro Tools. So we need to start and actually do some automation. So I'm going to put this channel into, into an automation latch mode, and we're going to start with get in the ballpark, right? We need to get close quickly. So what we're going to do is um, <clears throat> we're going to set some starting settings, okay? And um, we're going to actually put the console into a mode called preview. Now what preview allows me to do, even though there's existing automation written there on these tracks, I can freely tweak. Now this is a mode on the console that um, <clears throat> allows me to loop over a specific range and make changes without having to fight the automation that's already there. So we can come up with the, the, the final setting for this effect. Now we can also change these parameters over time and have them evolve and that's something that's really I think would be very powerful to be able to do that. So we're going to take advantage of some automation snapshots on the console. It's a way to basically tweak settings and then save those for use later. So we've got up to 48 snapshots that we can access and uh, at any point I can go and I can jump in and I can recall a snapshot and punch into that. Now instead of just writing that to that scene length, I'm now going to glide between my first setting and where I'm at now. So we're going to do a glide to all enabled. And you're actually going to see all those parameters visually change over time. So we should have an evolving um, axe throw by using GRM Doppler. Okay, so we're starting to increase in speed and the frequency is changing a bit. Now that we've got our basic Doppler effect created, we really need it to be more dynamic. So we want to do some, some volume changes and some ambience changes. We can do that very easily from our custom fader group on the D command. So let's actually do this in half speed again to give us more time to pull it off. It is a very, rather quick scene. So here we go. 
Let's play that back in real time. Okay, so that's not bad. I think I'd actually like to nudge that first volume bump a little bit. And I can simply come with my jog wheel and grab that range that we've, we've defined for that little, that little volume bump. And I can actually just nudge it back just a little bit to make that sit better. I think I'd also like to drop the whole thing down in pitch. And certainly we could use plugins. Um, to do that, but now in Pro Tools 8, we have the ability to, at any point in the design process, to right-click on a region and bring up the Elastic Properties window. And what this does for us is it allows us to actually pitch shift up or down up to two octaves. So at any point, I could say, you know what, let's try this maybe six semitones down and see what that does for us. So let's see what this sounds like now. So it's really starting to get there. It's really starting to build up and be an effective um, throw for this particular scene. 